Hi everyone, Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical precious metals brokerage house specializing in gold and silver. Well, today is uh, the fourth in our 2008 was just a warning and we're gonna talk about how they actually get us to volunteer moving into a new money standard. Because what we know is that the old debt-based system no longer functions anymore. When we hit peak debt in 97, we talk about that all the time. And the tools with interest regarding interest rates to drop interest rates to inspire more borrowing and spending, it's just not working anymore. We can look at the monetary velocity. So many think that the central banks could be out of ammunition though they've certainly had enough to keep this game going since 2008 when the system really died in earnest. The problem is, is that a lot of the extraordinary tools or experimental tools that they use, like quantitative easing and paying banks interest, etc., has actually fueled, it's really a hyperinflationary event, and it's fueled that the biggest divide between income inequality between the lower 99% and the 1%. And guess what? The 99% are noticing it. They're noticing that the upper echelon's lives have gotten easier, they've gotten wealthier, and that the bottom 99% have gotten poorer. And so there's been a global backlash against those global elitists and this is a problem for them because they want to stay in power. And also I'll point out in the 2017 Eidelman study on trust, since they've been tracking the trust, global trust, and they started this in 2012, never have they seen it decline this rapidly. So the trust is a big problem. They needed to create a trustless system. I remember the NSA white paper that talked about the cryptocurrencies, well, that, I think that was 1996. But part of what's preventing the central banks from now, I mean, you can see on this one, you have to go back to it, I'm sorry, forgive me on this. Okay, but on the purchasing power chart, I mean, you're at zero. So the negative interest rates now need to start removing principal, and that's really what they're all about. But if you notice that, you would go to the bank and you would pull out cash to hold that principal and thwart their attempts. So they need to get rid of the cash. But they tested it in India, and it was rather extreme when they demonetized 80% of the currency in that system. So they do, they go out and they test these things and they see where they get the pushback. They want you to volunteer. It makes their life a whole lot easier. In this 2015 piece that they published, Breaking Below the Lower Zero Bound, they openly admit to knowing how to make this money standard shift and referenced uh, 1913 when we went from a gold standard to and we started the transition to a fiat money standard and they say that they need to have uh, implement in a minimalist way in other words things must seem as close to normal as possible and the way that they'll do it so that they don't have to pull the cash out of the system is simply by varying the interest rates that you pay on the cash so that if you open up your account and you notice you have a thousand bucks in your account and the next day you have 900 and the next day you have 800 and you cannot protect your principal via cash, what are you likely to do? You're likely to spend it. They don't want you to save. They want you to spend. We have a consumer driven economy. So the direction that they want to take us in, we've talked about this quite a lot, is to dematerialize cash, just like they, they basically, well, they confiscated gold in 33. They took the only tool that the citizen had at that time to hold governments accountable and protect their purchasing power away. 
Well, we can't protect our purchasing power with dollars. We've lost 96% of that value, but we can protect our principal. They don't want you to have that ability. They want more control over it. They also state that if they can go in that direction, they can create for governments better tax policies. I'm going to read the underline, but you can see it on your screen. Because if we're all cashless, they can monitor and unify information on taxpayers' income and consumption. So what you take in and what you spend and how you accumulate wealth, and they can rethink that tax policy and they can design it to cover lifetime taxes. So you're completely in the system. You have no privacy on anything you do. And, you know, they can basically do anything they want because it's the push of a button once everything is purely digital. And they say the increased scope for individual taxpayer information goes across countries. So this is really for a global issue and they can actually impose capital income tax directly on shareholders eliminating the role of the corporate tax. So we know that we've just had a tax uh, reduction for the corporations to repatriate that money and also to lower their tax bill. It's the corporations that would uh, basically, they would eliminate that role for corporate tax and make sure that all the tax was put on the individuals. And it makes it easy for them to track and tag your purchases. And they can tax you on lifetime consumption. So there are a lot of benefits to governments and central banks on getting us to have and hold our wealth in purely digital form. And they know well how to make this transition. And part of what they also know is if you are distracted, then you won't notice the transition as much. So there's typically a lot of chaos that surrounds this shift. A lot of it is because there's so much abuse in the system that we know the, price, the global pension crisis that's going on. Well, that's already begun to hit. And as us baby boomers age, that's going to get worse because it's not, it isn't that it's not sustainable, it's not payable. And you saw last time how the laws changed so they're even more underfunded. But look at what's happening right now. When I stop to think about all of the buzz around the sexual assault cases coming out of Hollywood and, and the political scene, etc. It reminded me of the women's lib movement in the 70s, of which I was a part of. And, you know, I just see so many parallels between the chaos that was happening there and then and the chaos that is already unfolding here. Another piece, and we know that student debt is crushing. They can't, the students can't pay this debt. The income isn't there to service it. So all of this has to reset. The other thing that we know, though we don't know quite where it'll come from, is that typically war accompanies these transitions. So it could be in the Middle East, it could be in North Korea, it could be a completely surprise event that nobody even knows about yet. But all of these events would certainly create enough chaos to justify and hide that transition to a new system. Because the other thing that has to happen is the markets have to implode. We know that we have the second highest, most expensive stock market in history. And the same thing can be said for the bond market. And certainly the real estate market is also at an extremely high overvalued level. Nothing goes straight up. You always have to have some pullback along the way. But once a system gets so corrupted that it's a one-way market, it can only go up. And we've talked about the fact that they can't afford a 4% correction in these markets 
because the level of uh, leverage and insolvency in the banking system would become apparent to everybody. So they want to, to keep you in the markets, whether it's the stock markets, bond markets, the real estate markets, and they want that flight to safety into cyberspace. Now, we can have lots of discussions, but if you think about the uh, what those that used to be proponents of gold as a way to be outside of the system in a fully decentralized place, and they've turned to Bitcoin for that same thing. But gold's been around for 6,000 years. Bitcoin's been around since 2009, and it's not outside of the system. In fact, it needs all of the networking globally to survive. So it's not as out of the system as they want, but they need eyes on it because they need people to adapt. And it isn't just to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is being used for that. But to adapt to that cryptocurrency so that when these things crash and there is a flight to safety and then that piece is taken away from you, they can present the Fed coin, the US dollar coin, the SDR coin, but a cryptocurrency that is backed by a government or a banking agency that's touted as being much more stable, much more real. And right now what you're witnessing, I mean, I, I hope you guys understand that this is history in the making. And what we're really watching is Wall Street create a market from nothing. And then people put value on that. But it only has value in one place. And that's really the function of Bitcoin, the ICOs, all, all, the, uh, all of the talk about the cryptocurrencies. It's all over the place. It is about getting you to adopt it. And I've said many times, and I'll say it again, I know this is the direction that we are going in. But what I also know is there is no way, you don't have to go back to it, Carl, but there is no way that you can take all of the garbage that's in this system and all of those legacy derivatives that there is no market on. And if this technology is truly transparent and truly you can't alter something, then they cannot make that just go poof disappear. That means that it must be reset. It must. That's the only way to go cleanly into a new system. And so, you know, I'm always looking at what's happening because while they want you to fly to the arms of the cryptocurrencies, since that's the direction they're pushing us, they do not want you to go to the arms of physical gold and silver because that truly is decentralized and that truly is out of the system and no way for them to track it. And so as they grow their debts and push the markets higher, they're doing just the opposite with physical gold and silver via the paper spot markets on both. This is not an accident where you see the debt levels spiking, the stock market spiking, Bitcoin spiking, and gold and silver getting whacked. Even though it's performed well this year in terms of the spot market, you can see that it's the quietest that it's been since 2005. Let's see. As I recall, in August of 2005, that's when I saw the signs of the, of the uh, real estate market bubble popping, even though it didn't become apparent until the following January. And I think it's interesting that right at that point, just before the crisis started to really, the system started to break down, that's when you saw gold really quiet. And we have the same thing today. This is not an accident. This is not a coincidence. This is perception management. And in the inquiries where you have more people now looking for Bitcoin versus buying gold, that too is not an accident. They perform this by making gold and silver stay low or move down and Bitcoin and ICOs and all of that get all of that visibility. 
So then, of course, you have to ask, what do they do for themselves? Because my daddy used to say to me, do what I say and not as I do. It never made sense to me and it still doesn't make any sense to me. This is what the central banks are doing. They are buying gold. They are protecting their purchasing power because they know that in this upcoming reset, they want to stay in power. And who, he who or she who has true wealth, that money in their hand, can retain that power. This is what the one percenters do. You know that because these coins are in the hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars. And only somebody up at that level can afford that for one ounce of gold or a half ounce of gold. And that's going straight up. This is the spot market. So we know what's happening with that. Just the opposite here. And then this is where the opportunity lies. Because these are the kind of collectible coins that are certainly not up at this level. These are at the affordable level that are just a little bit more than what you would pay for a piece of monetary gold. So this is what I buy for myself because this is where the opportunity lies. Gold itself is severely undervalued as central banks are accumulating it and as the one percenters are accumulating it. Okay, but they want you and me, the general public, to stay away from the physical gold and silver market. I, I embrace it. That, for me, is exactly where the opportunity lies. I'm accumulating. I'm not saying that there won't come a time in the future where I'm going to convert some into that, but I'm going to wait until until this overvaluation blows off because we've been talking about the shifts in the market for the last couple months. Those aren't stopping. They're heating up. I think we're going to have a good run because of the repatriation, but I think this run is coming to conclusion. You know, timing is the biggest challenge of any technician, so I'm not going to call an exact date on it, but I know that it's coming. I can see the shift occurring and I'm going to be ready. You can't get ready one second before. It's just not possible. So if you have any interest at all in protecting your wealth that you're choosing to keep in those markets or diversifying, really, truly diversifying your portfolio to protect your wealth and dare I say it, even come out uh, ahead in this transition, give us a call at 888-696- Four six five three, And also, you know, stay tuned because we are really excited. I'm super excited about next week um, where I've got SGT and the X-22 report. So there they'll be interviewing me. But remember on the 9th, I've got David Dubine and we're going to be talking about Octane and I'm so excited about that. Um, I'll be checking out, well, actually for real time information and you know, Megan is great at notifying you on all of the different social media platforms that we're on at ITM Trading. And if you haven't already subscribed, just hit that subscribe button below. If you like this, give us a thumbs up and make sure please share, share, share. And we do, well, Megan and Carl and Eric, and I do glance at the comments too, but they try and keep me out of them because I get really involved and I'm really busy. But, um, you know, they keep me up on what's going on in there. So leave those comments. If there's a topic you want me to discuss, you know, as you know, I'll, I'll get to it. Just give me a second, but leave it in the comments below so that they can let me know what you want me to talk about. But until next time, please be safe out there. You take care now. Bye-bye.